Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and today is the big day. Operation Grand Heist is finally available for the PlayStation 4, and will be coming to the Xbox One and the PC next week. What we're going to be doing here in this video is taking a look at the new business model that Activision and Treyarch have implemented, because the new Battle Pass, of course, is here, and they've also decided to revamp the black market by making it so we can purchase supply drops, as well as revamping what can be found within the supply drops themselves. So first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the new operation because this event is going to be lasting for exactly 58 days which means it will be ending on Friday April 19th for PlayStation fans and then Friday April 26th for Xbox and PC fans. The items that we find here within this battle pass are actually pretty good in my opinion but of course a lot of this is going to be subjective so at tier 1 of course we get the new specialist Outrider. At tier 20 we get the arcade reactive camo for the Maddox and keep in mind once you unlock a reactive camo for a given weapon you you can then use that reactive camo on any gun you want, as long as you've unlocked gold camo for that particular weapon. At tier 25, we get the money bag melee weapon. Just... Let's sink in for a second, we're going to literally be able to kill people with money in the Black Ops 4 multiplayer, there's so many jokes I can make right here, but at tier 35, we're going to be getting the Lady Luck weapon camo, at tier 45, we're going to be getting the Warden Blackout character, which is really cool in my opinion, because remember how we had to go all the way up through nearly 200 levels with the very first operation just to get Hudson? Well, here at tier 45, we get the Warden from Mob of the Dead slash Blood of the Dead, and it looks pretty cool, at least in my opinion, but of course, that's very subjective. At tier 50, we get the new Rampage Full Auto Shotgun. Pretty cool looking gun. Apparently, it's actually quite strong. Might need to be nerfed, but we'll see how that goes. At tier 60, we have the Strip Reactive Camo for the Vapor. And once again, once you get this Reactive Camo for that particular gun, you can use it on any gun that you want, so long as you have gold on that particular weapon. And I personally really like the Las Vegas theme that we have here. At tier 75, we have the Mastercraft XZ7000 variant of the Augur. And the trailer that we find in-game is absolutely absolutely terrible. It doesn't actually really show you anything about the gun, but as you guys can see from this menu, it actually looks pretty cool, right? It looks like a Fallout weapon, or maybe an Iridian weapon that you find in the Borderlands franchise. Shout out to you Borderlands fans out there. And at tier 100, of course, we get the Switchblade X9 submachine gun. Now, of course, those are just the big things. There are 100 total tiers, therefore we get something new at every single tier, and it's mostly going to be a bunch of different titles and sprays and emotes and things like that, but we also get a bunch of different character outfits for the various specialists, and they all go along with that theme of cops and robbers that this operation is taking on. So with the battle pass now out of the way, let's go ahead and transition over to the supply drop model, because of course, supply drops are now back in full force just like they used to be. Previously, you could only get them by leveling up the battle pass. Well now, Blackjack is back even more so than he was before. Of course, his shop has been here pretty much the entire time, but now we have this menu right here where we can purchase supply drops, and don't get it wrong, these are supply drops, right? They have renamed them for some reason. I assume it's because they want to clear that stigma of the supply drop name, but reserve cases, reserve crates, they're all supply drops to me. Let's call them what they are. Reserve cases are going to be pretty much the same things that we've seen so far here in Black Ops 4. You basically get them for either progressing through the battle pass, or now you get them from playing multiplayer and blackout, and they only contain one item. Reserve crates are basically the supply drops that we used to know that would contain three total items from Blackjack's Reserve. Now, exactly what's in Blackjack's Reserve is actually somewhat confusing, so when you enter the black market for the first time, it's going to show you this trailer right here, and as you guys can see, all sorts of different items are going to be available. We have Mastercraft variants, we have Signature variants, which are apparently different things, which will now be giving you 25% increased experience. We have Blackout characters, we have Blackout character skins, we have all sorts of crazy things, of course, here within Blackjack's Reserve, and on top of all this, it appears that content that was previously exclusive to prior operations can also be found within Blackjack's reserves. So, for example, if you didn't get the fancy ICR at the end of Operation First Strike, it appears that you can get that item from Blackjack's reserves, along with everything else, whether it's the boombox variant of the SG-12 or the Hudson Blackout character, or what have you. The supply drops themselves are valued at 200 COD points apiece, which translates to about 2 American dollars, which is in line with pretty much every other 
another Call of Duty game that has supply drops, dating all the way back to the Advanced Warfare supply drops, which were the first ones in the series. Basically, you pay $2, you pull a lever on a slot machine, and you get three random items. That's how it's always worked pretty much here in the series. And the big question right now on everybody's mind is, does this system suck? Does this new operation suck? That's why I clicked on the video here today. Well, sadly, it kind of does. Not so much the operation, but rather the business model and what Activision is actually doing to the game and allow me to explain what's actually happening here. So with Operation Grand Heist, what they've actually done here is they've taken these systems that we saw back in Absolute Zero and pretty much turned them upside down and made things really confusing. So during Operation Absolute Zero, after you got to Tier 100 and got all of your content from the Battle Pass, every tier after that, which basically went on forever, you would get a supply drop item, right? Well, here with this operation, here with Grand Heist, that's no longer the case. Now, full disclosure, this could actually be a glitch. Like, why does it show Tier 101 and 102 here if they're not actually eventually going to add things there? It doesn't really make a ton of sense. It could be a glitch, but as of right now, you do not get anything for passing Tier 100. But instead of that, to replace that system, presumably, we have this new bar right here, which as you guys can see, I'm about 3 4 of the way through filling it and once you fill the bar you then get a supply drop item but the difference is it takes anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours to actually fill that bar as compared to the one hour that it took to get a supply drop item past tier 100 in the previous operation how i know this and as you guys can see i was able to track all my playtime this afternoon within my editing software and see exactly how much time i spent in game playing black ops 4 and as you guys can see i put in about an hour and 15 minutes an hour and 15 minutes only got me three fourths of the way through this bar so it's going to take a very long time which is a negative but a positive of this new system is you can immediately start working towards them right you don't have to wait until tier 100 so they take longer to earn but you can start earning them sooner so it may actually be a net positive if you think about it that way and the other change that they made on top of those two changes is they made so you can get a second daily tier skip via zombies but this tier skip skip is also really weird because keep in mind the time you spend in zombies does not count towards your battle pass progression whatsoever you can play seven straight hours of zombies and not get a single inch on your battle pass progression whatsoever but if you complete the challenge which the first one here is 750 tactical rifle kills if you complete that which give or take might take you 20 30 minutes something like that you'll get an additional skip towards your tier progress which is good if you of course can complete the entire thing within an hour and you actually like playing zombies so it's a really weird system what they've done here they basically changed up a bunch of things for virtually no reason and it's hard to tell whether or not this is going to be a net positive or a net negative for the community now because we don't have access to clear-cut numbers when it comes to these things i'm gonna have to give you guys some rough estimations here but let's say hypothetically Hypothetically, it takes you about 75 hours of in-game playtime to get to tier 150. I think it's pretty common, especially with tier skips, for people to get to tier 100 with about 50 hours of in-game playtime. Therefore, 25 more hours will get you up to tier 150. Well, previously, with the Operation Absolute Zero system, you would get 50 supply drops between tiers 100 and tiers 150. But with this new system here, with you getting one supply drop virtually every 100 minutes, give or take, you're only going to get 45 supply drops on your way up to tier 150, which is actually a bad thing, right? Now, obviously, it's good if you're the kind of player that doesn't really play all that much. You'll get more supply drops than you normally would have, but for the hardcore fans that play a lot, they're getting less supply drops than they would have gotten otherwise. So, again, those are really rough numbers, and they could actually be off. It's hard to tell the exact numbers for these kinds of things, but again, it really just goes to show that it's hard to tell whether or not this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing for us going forward we really have no idea not to mention the issues that lie with supply drops actually being purchasable now as well as all the content that is being locked away within supply drops that's actually something i don't think enough people actually talk about because there's lots of hardcore call of duty fans out there i'm one chances are most of you guys watching this video are one and therefore most of us have probably gotten every bit of battle pass content throughout every single operation but keep in mind, there are lots of people who can't do that. There are people that just, life happens sometimes, man. Things get in the way and you can't complete the entire operation on time. Therefore, you don't get that content. And what happens to that content after the operation ends 
is it goes in supply drops, right? So let's say hypothetically, you have a cousin who's not played Call of Duty Black Ops 4, but you get your cousin the game and your cousin is now playing the game with you. Your cousin dies to the Damon 3XP submachine gun and says, how do I get that gun? That gun looks fun. I would like to play with that submachine gun. And you have to tell them, well, you can't get it unless you get lucky via supply drop because you weren't here when that operation was actually live. You can see why that's a bad thing, right? It's bad for people who can't dedicate time to play during the operation, and it's also bad for people who get the game after the operation ends. And if they keep trying to sell this game to people as a three-year Call of Duty game, they need to make some changes, right? I mean, there are people who are going to buy the game in month five who can't access content that came out in month four. That's a really bad system, right? If it's bad enough for people in month five, imagine what it's going to be like for people in month 10 or year two or year three or something like that. So it's a really weird system we have here. On one hand, it's good. Don't get me wrong. On one hand, it's actually very good. The content that we get from the Battle Pass is typically fantastic. If you simply just play the game with any consistency, you'll unlock it, which is awesome. I enjoy that a lot, but I try to think about the other people out there who really aren't in my situation, right? I'm a YouTuber. I can dedicate 12 hours a day to playing COD if I want to, but there are people out there that can't do that. And there's also people who haven't bought the game yet. And I try to think about every person and every situation and try to see what would be best for everybody involved. And so far, this system really isn't that. It's better than what we've had previously. It's definitely better than Black Ops 3, but it's not necessarily the best system possible. I think there's a couple things they could do to improve it. Number one, adding contracts like we saw back in World War II would actually be really good. So people could directly earn things they may have missed from previous operations or maybe even take the infinite warfare route and give black ops pass holders instant access to all dlc weapons as well as non-black ops pass holders allow them to complete a simple challenge to get access to all the base variants of the dlc weapons if you think about it we have mastercraft variants we have signature variants now that give you more experience which are also exclusively within supply drops which is a whole other can of worms we have reactive camos there are so many different variants essentially of every single gun what's the harm in making sure the entire community has access to every single weapon virtually all the time that'd be a pretty good idea at least in my opinion there's definitely a lot they could do to the system but removing ourselves for a second from the supply drops and activision and the business model and stuff like that is the operation actually good yeah, I think it actually is. Based on my experience so far, I will say without a shadow of a doubt that Casino and Lockup are much better than Madagascar or Elevation. Like already, again, it's very early first impressions, but I think I know a good map when I play it. And these maps are much better than the DLC 1 maps. I actually like the theme of them. The flow is actually very good. I like playing different game modes on the maps themselves. I enjoy the maps quite a bit. When it comes to the weapons, I can't definitively say. I've watched videos. I've heard people give opinions. Everyone thinks differently, right? Some people think the Flado shotgun is the most OP thing ever. Other people say it's actually terrible. I really don't know. I don't buy tier skips, so therefore I don't have weapons yet. So I have to keep on grinding until I get them. But based on what I've seen so far, they look pretty good. And you guys know, new DLC guns, good or bad, are always fun here in the Call of Duty franchise. I haven't had enough time to actually play the Blackout content. Of course, I'm aware of all of it. I've covered all the news so far here in the channel. Um, I think Ghost Town looks fantastic. I haven't played it, but it looks fantastic all the new additions to the blackout map and the things that are going to be coming in the future that all looks fantastic right the operation itself from a content perspective I think is exactly what Black Ops 4 needed. We needed more content desperately in this game. And the balance update, that's been great as well. Like, everything about that is pretty good. But the business side of things, I think I, we find ourselves talking about the same thing every single year. The business side of things is the sketchiest part about Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Like, what's going on here with the Battle Pass system, supply drops now being purchasable, them adding way more things to supply drops with this operation than they have in previous operations. That's also a bit concerning. How far are they going to go? They're already adding base experience as well as tier progress boost to items in supply drops. How much further are they going to go on top of that? We really have no idea. So to answer the question, does the operation suck? No, it really doesn't. But the business practices behind it not exactly my cup of tea. It could be worse. Don't get me wrong. It could be worse. And it's good for hardcore players like us. But I try to think about everybody involved. And I'd love to hear what you guys think down there in the comments. What do you think of the operation so far? Are you enjoying the content? Are you enjoying the business model? What do you make of everything so far? Leave your thoughts and feedback down there in the comments. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.